You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. You know what we're doing here. I'm going to try to be a little bit looser with the intro. I've been reading the script. I just want to be... You're going to wing it? (laughs) Shrisman Ike on the ones and twos and coughs over there. Coughs and sneezes. Hello. Uh, Look, it's Old Movie Time Machine. You know what we're doing. We're watching motion picture films, you guys. Cinema. Created in the old United States of America between the years of 1945 in 1965, we're using these as windows into the past. What we do is we take these windows, we climb through them, we have a poke around in the world that lies beyond on the other side of the window, and then we return to present times and we discuss what we saw in that day and in that age with you, the gentle listener. We're going to be asking some pretty important questions when we're over there, or actually when we get back from being over there. But we're going to be answering questions such as, hey, who are these people? Hey, what are their habits? I'm not going to say hey right here, but (laughs) how are they treating each other? What decisions are they making and why? Also, probably most importantly, what are they wearing and what do their living rooms look like? And at the end of the show, we will collectively, all of us here today, we will answer The ultimate question on behalf of all of humanity. Society is depending on us, you guys. Civilization depends on this. Do we keep watching this? Are we going to keep watching this movie we just watched? Does anybody anywhere ever need to watch this ever again? Stay tuned to the end of the show and you will find out. By the way, I'm your host, Justin Zeppa. Guiding you through time and or space. Joined as ever by my panel of international experts. To my left. Catherine Sherlock. Hey, Catherine. Hello. Welcome back. Why, thank you. Grand to see you, madam. It's fabulous to be here. Fabulous to be fabulized. Fa- mm-hmm. uh, well, okay. Also, next to you, Shrish Manaik. Hey, Shrishy Boo. Hey, guys. Welcome What's back. <laughs> if we're just we're doing these intros. Hey. We're having a great day. It's the middle of the week. Everybody's feeling in top form. Peak I am. condition. I right? am. I'm feeling Mint um, extra throaty. Because of this, yeah, you had something. You've been dealing with something, uh, but we've. I hope it gives a little extra like texture to my voice, uh, sexy voice, right? That's right, and we're and we're of course helping you along with some some right. granddad's medicine exactly. here, a little scotch whiskey, <laughs> a little fifty nine of scotch whiskey over here. But hey, next to you, also slash across the ocean, Carolyn now rose, my sister and yours. Hey, sis. Hello. Welcome back to the program. Oh, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Now it is, uh, you're a little bit further behind us in the timeline here due to, you know, time zones and the shape of the globe and all this <laughs> stuff and the position of the sun. Are you drinking some of Granddad's cough syrup or what do you... I am drinking probably oh, Grandma's, grandma's yeah. cough syrup over here. <laughs> yeah. A little blanc. Just, a little blanc you know, vine. a good, like, late afternoon tipple. Mm. Hey, it's late afternoon somewhere, am I right? Actually, it's, it's yes. right here. Yeah, it's here and here. It's, just, it's not that it's four hours difference. It's really not that big of a difference. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> stay focused. What? Well, I mean, hey, it, it is called Old Movie Time Machine. Why shouldn't we talk about time, right? Right, exactly. Time is a fucking liar, I will tell you that. Well, how was it the first week of April, like two weeks ago, well, slash yeah, I think so. also two months ago? Yeah. And also this week's been at least a month long. Yes. Mm. Yes, indeed. Yesterday, in particular, was like two months long. Wow. Two, in one day. Wow. In one day. Oh, That's definitely how it felt. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm so- sorry to hear that. I mean, I hear. I, I feel you. It's been a week. Yeah. It's been a week. It's been a year. 
It but really I'm has. so it really glad has. <laughs> to be here with you all. I know. This is like the joy in my day. You know what's great about this episode? Uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. Trishma, you know, obviously you had your, your sickness you were dealing right, with. But so. I want you to know right now we're celebrating mm-hmm. Summer Vacation on Old Movie oh. Time Machine. We are on Summer Vacation. Oh. We are watching Break films. Break out your water wings. They will take you to Summer Vacation. <laughs> Break summer out vacation. your new moon trailer and your hitch, your ball hitch and, and your trailer breaks and get ready because... Because mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. we're going out there. No, you don't need that stuff. What you do need is a Abercrombie and Fitch trademarked car filled mm. with gear oh, to take out to the lake yes. because we're going fishing. It's man's favorite mm-hmm. sport. Nineteen sixty four. Girls. By- <laughs> exactly. Question right. mark. Question mark. Exactly Question right. Girls. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And the answer comes back again and again. Uh, not for this guy. I don't think so. Uh, mm. Mm, I don't I think so. Why? Mm. Unless you're a man that also loves men. Uh, oh. Are you implying that Rock Hudson may enjoy the company of men more than women? Absolutely, and I applaud him for it. <laughs> for real, right? You do it, Rocker. Right. The Rocker. Right. Rest you in do power. it. We're here uh, for you. Yeah, Rock Hudson's in this movie. It was directed by Howard Hawks. We have a female lead named Paula Prentice, who is a knockout in she her scuba excellent. gear. Oh, my God. We yes. saw her in uh, The Bachelor in Paradise mm-hmm. with the disgusting Bob Hope. Mm. She is too good for anybody in that movie. And so oh, she finds yeah. herself in Man's Favorite Sport in 1964 couple years later so this is last time we saw rock boy it was written on the wind right mm-hmm. so that was 1956 if i'm not mistaken uh, low pillar, sperm count. P- what's that now low sperm count low sperm. On the wind. do you guys wait do you guys hear that it feels like i feel a breeze i feel it Funny, I don't. It just happens. Comes through sometimes. I don't know what it is. Anytime we talk about it's a meteorological right on the phenomenon. Wind. Yeah, it's interesting. But that was '56. We saw him in Pillow Talk. That's 1959. Uh, he was apparently in like 90,000 mm-hmm. movies. We're gonna keep seeing him again. There are so many more movies where he shows up. Okay. We're glad to see him though. We like Rock, right? We're kind of pro okay. Rock. He's He's great. Okay, He's as great. far as Can we goes. Calculate at some point, and I'm happy to do it. I will use my <laughs> social scientist skills and calculate the percentage of movies we'll be watching in this era that is actually including Rock Hudson. Like they were, like most movies had to have Rock Hudson. It was yeah, like as legislation in, you know, in like California. Percentage yeah, is he it's, like thirty for reality to keep going? Do you hit your Rock Hudson quota for this yep. picture? Oh, I'll take it back to the what? editing. Yeah. I, Right, right. So I'm sort of curious, like, how many of these films is he the leading man in as we go through in this era? Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, my guess is, again, 90,000. But that's it's just a <laughs> ballpark figure. Just from what I see on our schedule for the next year or so, we're going to see Rock again. He is in this movie. Uh, he is... Well, I guess we'll talk about him. We'll get to it. Let's Let's do the one-line reviews. This is... It's man's favorite sport. Catherine, give me, you have a one line review for man's favorite sport. I do. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, that would be the okay, time. Okay, sure. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Should have given you the old. Oh, the thing, yeah. A little high sign, like, hey, you're on like now. Uh, spotlight. Here it is now. Okay, so uh, my one line is um, it's an implausible whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of the lures that he was selling at the uh, at the shop? Been, yeah. The implausible whopper. I think so. Right. Well put. Yeah. Well put. Yeah. Strishman Ike, you have not only a one line review but also a confession that you'd like to confess for the program, right? Yeah, I did finish watching the movie. <laughs> well, I sat through the whole thing. I couldn't. I was like, "This is still going." Like, <laughs> it was two hours long, and then I fast forwarded a bit at the end. This is shocking. You missed the best. <laughs> Listen, we make a promise to the people at home. They, we, do, gonna, we do the work. Yeah, well, and they're, they're sitting there like, hey, I love old movie time machine. I want, I want one of them hot snakes on, uh, what are we watching this? A man's favorite sport. Never heard of it. Let me Boring. dial it up and sit and watch it for two hours. And you're like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We want to hear it what Trishma has to say. I couldn't watch Trishman it. It says boring. <laughs> hot snakes. That's, my, so that, that's, that's your review? My one. It was okay. not funny and was boring. Okay. And I really tried, like. I feel like I made an effort to try and like get into this one. Well, I'm proud of you for making an effort. And I uh, totally understand this is not, it's not easy to get through. We're going to get to why. Carolyn, 
One line review, man's favorite sport. Any, also any dark confessions you'd like to confess? I only had the time this week because it's been a week. You have no idea. Um, to watch two thirds of it, of which though, I actually am going to continue watching it this evening after we wrap this up. It's a dangerous precedent, you guys. I mean, but I, I do have a one line review. Okay, please. How does this, this movie end? This movie has no ending. Is that the no? <laughs> okay. I was gonna say that this is the only film where the leading lady's legs are almost as long as Rock as Hudson's, Rock right? That's true. He, this is and it kind of a testament to his height. Mm. She looks like a normal size or like an average size. Well, not normal, please forgive me. An average size height, but she's known as like the tall, tall. actor, right? Mm. So right. Uh, Which he's, I, he's tall, she's tall. I mean, come on. They looked great together. I mean, it was very complimentary. Yes, they did. Okay, so look, you guys are on no, you're on watch right now because we don't we don't know what to make of what you're doing. Sometimes you're watching the middle of the movie. Sometimes you're watching just the end, but not the beginning. You're a bunch of wild cards. Mm. Maybe that's part of the reason why people show up for the program. You love these guys, right? right. Party line at oldmovietimemachine.com. Let them know how much you love them and them not watching the movies we talk about for three hours. <laughs> One line review, real quick, and then we're getting get into the. The issues. A man who can't fish or understand how zippers work wanders around in the woods for hours, annoyed that all these women want to do him. <laughs> yep, that's exactly Am I wrong? this movie. It's, it's, uh, no. And then there was like an inappropriate like Indian. Oh, boy. Oh, my that, God. That, that, oh, that yes. kept dropping Confucius yes. saying. Chief John, oh right? Chief John Screaming Eagle. Screaming God. Eagle. Okay, let's... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, if I was going to pitch this movie to you guys, mm. well, in order to make it, we're invested. Well, just to what, just to like, describe, like, guys, I have okay. a uh, I have a great idea. Well, yeah, actually, let's go into. Yeah. What's your elevator pitch? Here's here's my pitch. Okay, let's say it's uh, we're on the back lot. It's uh, yeah, it's the early. It's 1960 something, right? It's 1963. You have caught me, the studio head and or VP of production yep. in an elevator. Yep. You have got two minutes. Go. Here's what I've got for you. Hey, do you remember that movie, The Long, Long Trailer? Thankfully, no. It came out in- Wasn't uh, that Ricky Ricardo? Yeah, yeah. It came out in 1954. It was a big hit. It was kind of like a road trip, vacation-y type of picture. Sure. You remember in that movie, they go to the trailer convention- at the trailer mm-hmm. expo, and in the background, there were those guys smoking and practicing uh, their fishing. Mm-hmm. What if we made a movie just about those fishing guys who smoke a lot in the yeah, background? I'm out. What if we Are made that sexy into a, ladies? What if we made that? I mean, we will throw some in. Sure, and okay. we made that like feature length. That's the Are movie. Are they wearing shorts or wetsuits? The a uh, little column A, a little column B. I mean, we could. Why? why Can choose I do one? the casting couch session for this? Mm. For. <laughs> Because if I were a man in 1963, because only a man would be vice president of production at some movie studio, he'd be like, I want to see Paula Prentice's legs. Right. Uh, Apparently, a couple studios want to do that. I believe uh, that was the case in Bachelor in Paradise as well. There was a a high priority placed on seeing Paula Prentice's legs. Yes. Uh, Paula, I know you're alive, Paula, by the way. If you're out there, if you're somehow you're hearing amazing. this. You're amazing. Absolutely amazing. You're amazing. You are a, a sort of a forgotten gem. A little, mm-hmm. like, not really a household name in the same way that many people of the era Are we going to hashtag be. her? Oh, no. We're going to try to get in contact with her. Like, if hashtag she's alive, Paula like, Prentice. she's amazing. And now we have this content. We could be like, hey, look, we talked about you here. We talked about you here. We're going to be talking about her uh, in a couple months. When we we do need to make film. her go viral. Paul Apprentice? There needs yeah. to be a, a apprentissance? It, there does a, need to a be a apprentissance. Paul 100%. No, apprentissance. I like Prentissance that. Apprentissance is better. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Maybe we need to, happen. we're going to get, hey, if you guys know Paul Apprentice, anybody listening, please put, send her our send way. Send her our way. <laughs> Party line Paula. at oldmovietimemachine.com. That's an email. We use it. That's us now. <laughs> Lucky you. So man's favorite sport. This Girls. is a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's good. It's good. So this is a, it's a movie about fishing. So I'm just going to, uh, before we really get into it, are we supposed to assume that Men are not good at catching women 
Because most fishermen are not catching fish. Oh, I mean, that. I feel like you've taken it an extra two levels beyond what the filmmakers thought about anything when yeah, making this movie. Sure. Like, was, yeah, that was much thinking. You always hear it's called fishing, not catching. Yeah, I guess so. I guess if you watch Wicked Tuna like I did in the pandemic... <sighs> They always say, it's why it's called fishing, not catching. See, and this is where we need, oh, I need to, uh, I'm sorry. This is where we, we would need Brindis, who is, who is a Wicked Tuna person. She knows this, but yes. uh, of course we didn't mention at the top of the show, she's in Washington, D.C. right now, defending oh, uh, the Boom God, Room, yeah. our museum, uh, in front of Congress. Uh, it was closed, oh it was closed door last week. This week, I don't know, I've got like a sort of like a stream here, sort of shortwave stream. Maybe we can check in, maybe we can hear what, how it's going. I would like to introduce myself at this point to you. Uh, I believe you are a stranger to uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, my name is uh, Congressperson Horatio Fatcat, and I am here uh, leading this panel of my esteemed peers right now. And uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself to the panel? Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Brinti Sudeinus Okay, now, uh, now may I call you Berndis? Uh, please don't. Order! Order in this closed door congressional committee panel. Oh, that sounds really rough. It sounds like they're really giving her what for over there. That's tough. I think but she's being really strong. Like her she's and, being really strong. The, yeah, yeah. They're trying to intimidate think, her. They're doing that, you know, that man uh, thing. Yeah, of what, yeah, you know. yeah. That, she, they've picked the wrong person. No, to do that don't, don't, yeah, yeah, don't do that with don't her. Do that to but them anyway, she's a wicked tuna person. She would know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. She will send mm -hmm. you an email about it later. I have no doubt when this comes out in two months or whatever. But uh, so you're saying, because. But the especially difference between then, fishing I would say with mm. with uh, uh, Rock Hudson, as in as we've already discussed, he is definitely not looking to catch any women. Yeah, and he's nor is he fishing. Like he's not doing anything to no. make himself alluring to any species of any mm -hmm. sex. Uh, he hates being anywhere we see him, except for the mm -hmm. Abercrombie and Fitch sales floor yeah. and even then he's trying to get out of talking to people he's and kind of a misanthrope abercrombie and fitch circa 1990s like late 1990s i would totally expect rog hudson to be in the like abercrombie and fitch store looking at the male models yes yes or being one himself like if if he was employed by them he would be shirt off with like a flannel wrapped around his waist or something like that throwing For a sure. volleyball is that what you do with sure. volleyballs you throw them mm. <laughs> All right. No, you strategically place them in front of your crowd. You, you set them, and then you spike them, and then you win all the gold, right? Yes. Uh, I, I had gym class. <laughs> your cousins play that what you collegiate did? volleyball. Do you know volleyball? Yeah. Yeah, okay. If I had been, if I ever trained in volleyball, I yeah. think I would have been a really good volleyball player. Oh, really? Okay. But I never kind of studied the sports. Which, uh, which position would you pl play? Like a small forward? Power forward? Just one of them. Catcher. <laughs> Left field. <laughs> I'd like you, to be absolutely nowhere near a volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, still allergic to balls flying at my head. You're more... <laughs> Basically, what I'm seeing in this movie, 1964, 10 years after what we saw in the long, long trailer, is the same shit, but 10 years older and 10 years more tired. Yes. It's a little less glossy. It's those same people, 10 years older, 10 years deeper into their ways. But what's happening in 1964, you guys? The fucking Beatles blow up the United States of America. So as I'm watching this dickhead out in his uh, his waders trying to fuss with his rod and reel while we get this like lazy, mm -hmm. loungy organ music in the background and everything. And just thinking like, this is, meanwhile, like, uh, so middle aged, like all yeah, all the the young women of the world are suddenly uh, discovering their sexuality because rock and roll is blowing up mm -hmm. everywhere and upsetting thing, and that becomes the start, you know, part of the start of the cultural fracturing that we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. And so this all seems so old to me, and it's so yeah. bizarre to think that like they're making this probably in 1963, most likely. So the events of 1964 that we talked about. Uh, as far as like escalation in Vietnam, Beatles go to America, this sort of like cultural revolution that starts happening in 64. It's right around the corner. 
these guys don't just get it. Like oblivious to it. Yeah, they're just oh. stuck in 10 years prior. Right. Yeah. And here we are. I, I think that was one of the reasons why I found this so uncomfortable when they walked into this space. I was just like, my God, this is fusty. It's <laughs> antique, it's right? Yeah. fusty. Yes. But it's also so dark. Like you'll never the see a store fusty in this. with a, such a dark interior. Like you want it to be more... Yes, usually you want your products well lit right. and you people you know, to... Yeah. And like they have like very dark wallpaper. And yeah, not yeah. If you're Abercrombie and Fitch That's circa true. 2000, That's true. they were pretty dark inside there. That's because, uh, yeah, there could be some like... <laughs> they wanted to make you, you feel like... Yeah, like there could be some clandestine like touching. Yeah, right. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you did you <laughs> grab this shirt? Uh, or is my hand resting What's on your hand? Like, what are you wearing? Yeah. Can I try that shirt on after you try that shirt on? Let's wear each other's shirts. Well, okay. Abercrombie. I'll be quiet. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to. No, maybe there might have... My, it wasn't an Abercrombie store, but we definitely... In my college days, we got up to no good in dressing rooms. Like, it was a... Oh, oh shit. No. Okay. Hey, that, was, that was a thing. Been you there. Know? Oh, no. we'll say business. <laughs> yeah, <that's all> right. <laughs> it was never an mm-hmm. Abercrombie, but um No, but I So you say. That's cool. <laughs> um Okay, but so what you're pointing out oh, here so, is oh, that this film So so to get back to Paul Apprentice real quick, just to wrap that up, just to, to tie that up, the old timiness of it all, is we saw him five years prior with Doris Day, right? Who at that point is in her mm-hmm. mid to late thirties mm-hmm. and, you know, was making films in the forties and all this. So she seems of the prior era, whereas Paula Prentice mm-hmm. strikes me as a modern woman. Yes. And yes. So she's saying what she feels and thinks. Yes. She's being very forward. Oh, she's, she's, she's running the yeah, show. She's young and just like running circles around him. And mm-hmm. he is, the old world. He represent. He's the archetype of the old way of doing things. He he's is, my husband. He's American, and I run circles around him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your husband's also a very progressive man in his own right. Of course. Oh my you god! Know, yeah, like, I wouldn't have married him otherwise. Yeah. So we we take the we take the things we like from Roger Willoughby's archetype. We like his tweeds. We like his uh, his chin or whatever. You know, like we like that can do attitude. But we leave the misogyny. He does not and have the, a can-do attitude. Well, not in this movie. That's true. He's uh, he's like a I can't do anything. <laughs> he's a hopeless baby attitude. He's, he's a hopeless well, man is, baby. He yeah. also knows he's a fraud. Yeah, Deep and he down, lives with yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And it I think eats that, at that, him. That, that, yeah, it feeds into that's why everything. Rock Hudson was so perfect to play this. He's like, I can't fish. I also like men. <laughs> <laughs> Or right, which if you want to make a, if you want to gear this movie more towards me, at least make my character not like the women who clearly want to fuck me. Mm-hmm, exactly. Of which there are a couple. I mean, it's not just the one. There's a people showing up. Chief, He's got Chief a John screaming. He was women. counting them at one point in the bushes. Okay, we got to get through. We're not even out of Abercrombie and Fitch yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have to get out of Can here. Can you? Are we not? Are we surprised we're not out of Abercrombie? And Fitch uh, I mean, not yet? really. I mean, this is a reality. I love it. I love it so much. Just like what a, is this pool? I love here this in little pool. We haven't even what counted ashtrays. So this is not unlike what we saw at the trailer convention uh, when you're uh, testing your rods and reels. Is you get a little practice oh, pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so right, right. that's what we have mm-hmm. going here. They're doing the. The Ten eight, o'clock, nine, eleven o'clock, ten. nine o'clock, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Tom here, who doesn't get a speaking line, not a credited role, so he's not going to get paid as much as uh, as the major here. But uh, he does get to demonstrate his good wrist action, and he's very good at wristing that mm, that mm, reel. You know, it's he's all in the wrist. You know, that's what they say, and mm, he is mm. uh, deadly accurate with it. Mm, so that's what the ladies say. That's, I mean, if 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 that's your persuasion, then that's what they would say. But again, <laughs> not not to Roger. That we're aware of, very reluctantly with Roger. So he goes in to see his boss, Mr. Cadwaller, who is uh, a character actor who in this movie is wearing a toupee that periodically shifts around his head. That's kind of like the running gag for him. But he's also, uh, not unlike Roger Willoughby, a very fussy, fussy middle-aged white man, a doughy white man who enjoys uh, outdoor sporting goods things. That's every man in this movie. That's the entire film, basically. Uh, but Roger arrives to meet him, and who does he see outside waiting to also see Mr. Cadwaller? But the very two vixens who stole his parking spot outside. That's right, it's Abby and Easy. Shocking. Wearing their mustardy tweeds, waiting to have a chat uh, with Mr. Cadwaller and Roger. 
And what we learn from this chat, this is basically where all of your plot comes into play. Uh, it's just this one scene. So Easy Muller, the German woman, her father owns the lodge up at Lake Wakapuji. And Abby, Paula Prentice, is the PR person working on their behalf. And they've concocted a scheme to where they get Roger Willoughby, who is, of course, the most the world famous fisherman who who wrote the book on the subject, get him to go up to their tournament, and that's going to get a lot of eyeballs on the tournament and the lodge. It's going to bring tourist dollars, and that's what keeps them in business. I believe, unless you guys have any other information, that is what the rest of the movie is built yeah, on. Yeah, I, I think yeah that. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. I've got that at this point. I got it. It's like the second round, second round but, of listening to this. Yeah, I, it, it's kind of an also round, you know, it's irrelevant. Yes. Almost. Well, it's also crowded out by a lot of uh, fucking business, as we call it, in the acting world. Their interactions are not necessarily scripted. So we see a lot of sort of we're making up filler lines as I talk to each other and we're doing this banter mm. and you said something and maybe it's a little off script and I respond a little off script and we're going to act like it's normal, right? Because the guy hasn't said cut yet. And I don't stop talking like Roger Willoughby until he says cut and and we're done now. Okay, we're done. But it's just these really long one shots, these one take things of them back and forthing it. Mm -hmm. And it is... Boy, and that's the whole plot of the story, which was kind of lame to me. Yeah, not a lot of twists I was like, or this turns. Is I, I, this is, yeah, I think the dialogue is meant to be funny. Yeah, yeah and they, that's the yes. thing. It's not. Yeah. No, it's not. And again, not no. unlike that funny feeling, it's the same tone of... Joan is my mate. This is the worst three episodes of Friends I've ever seen right. stitched together into a, a motion picture. How could you choose the worst uh, three? Are they all bad? Oh, man, those are fighting They're words. All, some, all, you know some people I, on this yeah, board. I, I, I know. You know. I know it. I'm poking the bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all attractive people no, they're not. Uh, kissing they're not each other. You know? um, I would not give it house room. Ever. Wow. Not even at the time. Wow. So now, hell no. <sighs> okay. Okay. You've said, you've made it very I, clear. Yep. You've made it clear. Yep. That line is in the sand. It's been drawn. Okay. Yeah. Fight okay. me. Okay. Sounds like some bonus content, actually. Ooh. Catherine watches Friends. <laughs> uh, ah. Party line at oldmovietimemachine.com if you want to see that. If you would pay to listen to Catherine watching uh, one episode, God, one episode should, of like, like one of them. Oh, torture, <laughs> torture. Uh, you love it, maybe or, or hate it. Either way, the listener wins. Could you be anymore? <laughs> Very good, right? <laughs> how's your know. could you? <laughs> how's your weenus report? By the way, did you file that yet? Ah, <laughs> oh, friends. Did I, no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be either way. Right. Yeah, you know what? I think this kind of. Thing really spawned that shit. You're absolutely bang on. The uh, the one liners, mm -hmm. the uh, well, yeah, it's just the dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Twice. Yeah. So they lay out the entire plot of the film. This is exactly what happens. And while they're doing that, though, he uh, Roger is very put out by this entire scene. He does not like being roped into this little scheme of theirs. And it's almost like he's he's harboring some kind of dark secret, mm -hmm. but he is not into the idea of going up there and being a part of this fishing tournament. You guys intriguing but uh mr cadwaller of course is like well nonsense you work for me and you work for abercrombie and fitch the brand i mean you're going to go up there you're going to represent the the company as well as your own book so of course you're going to do this don't be ridiculous mr cadwaller by the way has one of these old man pipe stands on his desk of course is so many different pipes that he can <laughs> rotate through in his pipe smoking day Seriously, why does a man need so many pipes? They say you're supposed to rotate for seasoning purposes or something like that. Oh, really? a whole, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, okay. that's Who's what they? they say. Yeah, the powers that be, the fusty the, men, the, the, those in the in the know, probably doughy white guys. I would yeah. gather uh, during during part of their explosive dialogue. Uh, Abby knocks a an ashtray into the fish tank behind Mister Cadwaller. Soaking his toupee, which now dries atop his uh, his coffee urn or water urn there, and he's just a wet man with no hair sitting at his desk with all these pipes. But he seems to be perfectly fine with the lack of toupee. He he says it's his wife who wants him to yeah, wear it, and he he's, seems he's happy to for the stuff. break. Yes. Uh, so also, hats off. Another oh. ashtray. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well played. Yeah. And. <laughs> 
That's Friends caliber material, Catherine. Oh, damn it. Come on now. Surely not. This is just an example. We're looking at a shot here of just him and his impotent man rage trying to blow away these two ladies who are laughing in his face. And this represents pretty much everything. Mm. She, Abby, Paula Prentice, I would like to point out, is giving a really nice performance here. And not that Rock isn't. He's he's doing some fine acting himself. But as far as being a, a charismatic person that we want people to watch, she's really carrying everything here yeah. at this point. She's super charming. She's laughing at him. She's having a fun time in her role. And she's totally committed as well. Uh, this is not... This is not her fault. Let's say she is not guilty of the problems with man's favorite sport. Greetings again, everybody. It is me, the voice from the editing booth, talking to you about our great products. You know what? Actually, hold on. We always talk about the Tea Public Store, but I'm going to take this moment, our little ad break here, to tell you all about the Boom Room. You, you hear all about it during the show, the Boom Room right? You know these words. This is our Patreon page. The link is in the show notes. You can go check it out. And here's how it works. If you sign up, you subscribe. It's a mere $2 a month and you get more than double the content that you're getting on this free feed right here. All these movies that we're talking about for like, you know, 50 minutes to an hour on this show you're listening to here, we talk about all these movies for like two hours, two and a half hours. At some point, we're going to break three. It's just going to happen. Anyway, if you go to the Boom Room, join up. It's a great community of lovely people. Uh, that, and one of those lovely people could be you. And you sign up and we get, you know, we'll, we'll give you we give you a little surprise every now and then, a little little behind the scenes glimpse at the making of the show and all that stuff. But you want to be there. It's a great party. So check it out. It's our Patreon. We call it the Boom Room. The link is in the show notes. And if you join us, we will thank you as I will right this second. Thank you. And now back to the show. So uh, Easy arrives at this point. Just as, breezing in and out as uh, easy does. Breezy easy, right? And she comes in and she's got great news, you guys. Guys, Trishma, I need your attention. Joe Kilroy is in town. Mm. Joe Kilroy has shown up. The fishing winner from Chicago, Chicago's greatest fisher person, is at Lake Wakapuji, and he is ready. So you know what? Uh, we don't even need you, Roger. This is a, the, a he. Kilroy is going to bring such press. So much, so much chutzpah to this event that we're throwing up here. Roger, you can go, my friend. You can go. So they concoct a plan of like, okay, so how do we get Roger out of the tournament? We've wanted him in the entire time. This is as deep as conflict goes. This is as cutting as it gets. Well, we want him out now. We don't need him. So, fake an injury. Let's let's put him in a cast. You can't, mm -hmm. guys. You can't cast a fishing pole when you're. Arms in a big old cast, right? Right, you guys? So what do they do? They go back to his place. Oh, also, it starts to rain. <laughs> and oh, um, and their shirts go, like, invisible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, uh, they are Why not wearing is bras. Scene? Why is this scene in here? Is it just to show that these ladies are not wearing bras? I uh, mean, what is the point? And he doesn't give a fuck. He's and he's like, like, I can't. Oh, ladies. Oh, yeah, no, he's give a ladies, I can't possibly look at your titties. I oh, my <laughs> goodness. Oh, titties are so in my eyes. Oh, wash my eyes up with soap. Get the titties yeah, out yeah, of my yeah. eyes. <laughs> it's like, what? Too many tits, right? Sorry. But he, no, you're absolutely right, though, because he does seem, let's, okay, so there's coding and there's Rock Hudson's backstory or whatever. This in the in the context of this film, the people we see in this film, this character Roger Willoughby is physically repulsed by the sight of naked women or women and their body parts seen through wet shirts, which is what we have here. He, women with no bras on. Well, I mean, wet shirts, and I would say, look, gu guess what? They're beautiful. They're perky. Why, yeah, right. Why of course wear a they bra? Will be. I mean, why yeah. be constrained? Exactly. Ladies. Gravity is still on their side. You know, it's God. why not. But and he, if it's not on their side and you're good with it, go with it. He can't stand the sight of them, though. He does not want to see them. And they're they're fine with it. They're like, you know what? Oh, wow. This makes me want to take my bra off right now. <laughs> Catherine Sherlock Do it. is removing her bra right now, everybody. 
Can you do the thing where you pull it out the side? Uh, yeah, of I your can. Want me to do it? Do I do it? I can do that. I can do Catherine. it. I'm not okay. even wearing a bra. <laughs> oh, what? Look, see, see, it's There's happening. It's happening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do it. Yes. <laughs> it's happening. Score. It's happening. We've it got, is joys of the working We've got, whoa. Yeah. Catherine, that was and so fast. she tossed it. Yes. <laughs> oh, Trish, Mike, you're next. Nice. Long eyeball. I'm uh, not wearing the right type. <laughs> okay. To do that. Yeah, nope. <laughs> I get it. There'd be a lot. Mine don't even have a, a clasp in the back anymore. They're just like nothing. Sports all the way. You know, I never thought Sports. that this podcast would lead to everybody popping their tops, but that's just what happened here. It only took us 12 episodes to get there, but oh, interesting. You know, Justin, you should be so proud. Your international panel of bra burning women. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, experts. Clearly. Clearly. It. It would take to, an expert. to be fair, as soon as I get home from work, the bra is off. off. Right. So I am, I am in bra off. overtime right now. So that thing, thing that needed to out. get out of here. Catherine, you don't need a bra to record. It's a podcast. That's true. And I know. I just kind of rolled here pretty much straight from work. So. <sighs> okay. So from there, we go back to the cabin. We're putting on a, a big old fakey plaster of Paris cast. Mm-hmm. The only thing we need to note here is this picnic, picnic set back here. That's it's amazing and I want it. It's like great. It. So this is what was in the wicker suitcase then is a full mm-hmm. plate and uh, dinner you service know, here. Often I search those on Amazon and I think to myself, I'd really like a whole picnic kit and but, a wicker basket. And then I'm like, what the fuck would I use that for? But for your, and don't for you the mini so picnic. Heavy. It's so heavy. I did actually have something like this at some point. It is impractical. Oh, so it's not. Unless not, it's on wheels. You're not lugging it to your campsite yeah. then. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, okay. No, no. And no, no. also. When I actually do tailgate, which I do things where we tailgate and I'm like, I'd love a good spread like that. We have like 25 people. What is one little picnic yeah. basket for two or four going to do for 25 True. people? True. Yep. Yep. Just saying. Yep. It's suboptimal. Uh, this cast making scene goes on for fucking ever. It goes yeah. on oh and on and on so and on. put it on and then they take the motherfucker off. Well, that's the thing. Okay. So look, yeah, we're back in his was cabin a reason though. or you clearly... Oh, there's uh, we're, hmm, we're almost there it happens very quickly the whole cast uh mm. detour doesn't pay <laughs> off well yeah i mean it's or, yeah exactly there's but, a lot of like touching rock hudson's arm and patting it with more because doesn't he walk around like this for a while he does he yeah. does yes so i just wanted to real quick we do need an ashtray count so we have one that we know of the green one somewhere over there mm-hmm. right Look at that little blue one. Number two right there is a little a little blue teal guy. Great colors. Let's keep an eye out for some more of those. We have two ashtrays. So she and Easy leave Roger to his newly casted arm. They rush over to the lodge to check out this Kilroy guy. It turns out, you guys will never believe it. Irony of all ironies. Joe Kilroy, he's in a cast. He himself shock uh right actually, you never think his, his little chicken wing he he did and so he cannot participate he can only uh be enthusiastic about the fishing tournament but this just means that roger doesn't need to be in this big old dumb cast so what do we do we got to get him out of it because he can't he they've positioned his arm upward in a very stupid way to where he can't do anything he can't take a piss, you know what I mean? Like he's he's walking around in a salute f- format, of which we get some comedy there because, of course, he's going to pass Major Phipps with his saluting cast, and Major Phipps is going to mm-hmm. salute back and get a lot of uh, great jokes, quote unquote jokes. He is looking for these ladies. These ladies are looking for him, and they're like, "Hey, Raj, great news! Kilroy's got a cast as well. You don't need yours. You don't need yours. What are we going to do? We're going to take you out to this awesome '60s garage again, Grandpa's garage. I love everything that's happening back here. All these different cans and pipes and the loose screws and all that shit. I love it. Can uh, I ask you on a family front? Are you thinking of Pappy's garage? I'm thinking of, uh, yeah, Pappy would be one. Uh, yeah. Grandpa Raisin in as well. Grandpa, I was going to say, like, you're really thinking great grandparents. Great grandparents, yeah. I, I should be more specific. Great grandparents. Because uh, those were some gents that could put some things together with whatever they had. But also, <laughs> you know, this would be uh, in, in the more grandfatherly realm. Uh, Papa 
You know, oh yeah, mom's dad was it was very of this ilk and background. You know, being Pappy's son, of course. He also fished and did pheasant hunting and did all the things. This is yeah, his this is era. his sweet spot exactly. So that's maybe that's part of it as well. Okay. Uh, Gramps, Gramp, Grandpa Z, of course, would this would not be his no. uh, his thing. Not at all. Not at all. Not organized mm. and too many children running around. Yeah. Not as. I mean, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> but they uh, they really go to town on this cast, and it's supposed to be, again, it's so funny, you guys. I can see you <laughs> laughing from <laughs> here. Yeah. The hammer and chisel, and we're going to try to saw the it off. saw. She comes after him with a rotary saw and mm-hmm. buzzes this thing off his arm. It is so dangerous. You could mm-hmm. not put this into a movie theater these days. No. This would be rated no. X. This is like she could have passed his out. Yeah, yeah. chainsaw massacre, and she doesn't care. Look at the look on her face. She is so into this, and she does it with such authority too. Just zip one there, zip the one there. And no one's wearing safety glasses. No, 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 no. We're just blasting plaster into everybody's We're just doing it. Uh, Retinas, the eyeballs. Yeah, right, right. So uh, he is now cast free. Congratulations. If we cut to a little bit later in the evening, these are some. Why long are they days. living together? Have we... They're roomies. They are best girlfriends, obviously. Easy comes and goes. She's easy breezy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they have a thing going on. Could be. Maybe they're just good girlfriends. Uh, They spend time together. They're doing their nails here late at night, hanging out in their jammies. And it is 1.30 in the morning. These girls are wide awake, having girl party. They call up their boy, Roger Willoughby, who is, again, so annoyed to hear from them. But Abby needs a sleeping pill. She just can't. She's all keyed up from the day. It's been a big day of uh, rotary saws and wet waiters. So why wouldn't that keep you awake? Do we think this is? Uh, It's it's a heavy one, apparently, because she is out like a light eventually. (laughs) But and this is a time when sleeping pills are very common, I guess, because he's like, well, of course I have a sleeping pill. And so she just pops. Uppers and downers, man. Yeah. Either way, blood flows, right? So she pops on over to his cabin and in her little cute pink jammy set. Can we talk about this for a minute? Uh, She's wearing a sleeveless pink and white striped shorty pajama set. It's a onesie. Is is it a onesie or is it a, is it a two, a top and a, some shorts, short shorts. I think it's a twosie, but it has a a tie at the waist to emphasize her hourglass figure. I think it's just a cute pajama set. Look at her. Kind of want it. We got got this tie though. What is this tie? It's and to emphasize the waist. She has a tiny all right. waist. All right, all right, all right. Tiny, tiny. Just asking questions here. Just, I'm just raising the question. Listen, ashtray inventory. We've got two so far. Let's do legs show and talk about she like, got, your she legs, got them legs for days we're gonna, and your amazing figure. We're going to see her legs in a minute. Hold on. Let's count these ashtrays for fuck's sake. Let's stay on track here. <laughs> so look, we got one, two ashtrays. Two. We have the We have the green one that's hidden over here somewhere. We've got this green. blue teal one. We've got a third green one over here. Interesting. Keep an eye on it. That's three ashtrays. Three ashtrays in Roger Willoughby's cabin. There Ooh, she is. Legs. There are these legs. Hello. Look at those legs. <laughs> but guys, you know what I'm looking at? You are not looking at the ashtray. I'm looking at this big old ashtray over here. That's right. <laughs> no, 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 no. This has no. divots for your smokes. And it gets used later, too. So that is ashtray number four, four. But hey, let's go back to uh, Paul's legs here. Very nice indeed. And she comes over and she decides, you know what? I don't want the sleeping pill. And he's just, he can't believe it. He's like, well, you asked for one and I'm going to give you one. And why won't you have the sleeping pill? Because I don't want to. Why are you taking your jacket off? Because I'm a little fucking flirt over here and I need you to pay attention to me. The real reason I'm here is. Look at my legs. Sexy tap. Yeah. So, of course, he's a complete asked to her the entire time uh but she just wants to know what it's like to kiss him is what she ends up saying and he berates her and she ends up crying at a certain point and then i'm pretty um, sure i stopped watching it somewhere around here they almost kiss at this point and then he fortunately for him because god he does not want to kiss this beautiful woman the, the he gets a phone call from major phipps who at apparently Two o'clock in the morning, mind you. This they set up this timeline. It's not right, me. Right. Wants to come over and talk about fishing for the next morning when the tournament starts in approximately three hours. I don't know what anybody's doing at this point. Well, I know what she's doing. She, I mean, you know. And she's good for to you. Get some nuts. Good for you, Abby. Yeah. You do your thing, right? So day three of the fishing tournament, you guys. <laughs> Jesus. 
Oh, there's still day three left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Shrish, oh, you missed it. Oh, You're missing so, out. So I think I missed more. a good half an hour then. <laughs> this is, I think, where I had to turn it off so I could get on with my day. So Sorry. at this point... Yeah, I wish I had, frankly. <laughs> me too. Okay, now this is all a mystery to me, so tell me. So day three of the fishing tournament, happens? you guys, he's out there and he's fishing. It turns out, you'll never believe it, he's not good at fishing. So he gets oh. his line tangled and he has to physically drag the entire rod, reel, and line with fish attached onto the shore. And when he does that, he runs smack dab into our old friend, Mr. Trail Bike Riding Bear. Oh. And then we get those shenanigans that happen and where he runs back so into the water. So he a bear? So the bear no, that was riding no. the bike, uh-huh. he runs away from the bear. Oh, okay. Kind of like stumbles out of the woods as bears fucking do. And is like, what's going on over here? And he sees this guy. You want a picnic basket? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> is that a fish? Oh, bears like fish. Can I have a fish? Right. Anyway, and Rock Hudson turns around and sees him and he's like, oh, b- 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 bear. And he runs back into the water, but he still catches the fish. So he ends up winning the tournament to oh. little applause, really. Okay. He wins the tournament, but I have an ashtray sighting here. So we have five in his cabin, or do we actually have six? Because we have one next to the telephone as well. So that is a total of six. Never see, uh, well, we we briefly see the bedroom before, but I don't think there were any in there that I noted. Uh, But Mm -hmm. six in just one space is an insane amount. There's one on a bedside table, though. It's, It's crazy. So he re- he wins the tournament, but he's ultimately sad because he knows he's a fraud and uh, he's just stumbled into this. So Abby shows up at his cabin again for some reason. I don't know like what it takes to get her turned off of this guy, but she's into it. And she wants him to tell the truth because she knows that he is inherently a good guy. And Tell the truth about what? He's a phony. He's a phony. She's a phony. She's like, look, you need to tell these people that you don't know how to fish. Even though you, you won this tournament fair and square, which they eventually come to that conclusion. Because the truth will out. Yeah, but what right. is the, what truth? Like, did you say the truth will out? Yeah. Just like the bloody queen over here, this one. Right. Yeah. The truth will out. He's a man baby and he needs a mommy. Yeah. And she wants to be that mommy, I guess. She, But I she guess. leaves and he ends up talking to himself about how he was going to turn himself in anyway. A likely story. And then he goes to the bar to confess his sins of being uh, a con artist, making his billions off of fishing gossip. Did he make money out of this? Well, he wins the... Yeah, he's going to sell his book. Yeah, this is the problem. You know, he works at the prestigious shop selling fishing gear as an expert. He's got a book Mm -hmm. as an expert and he can't actually fish. And so when this news comes out, it is going to rock the fishing world, Shrishma. Yeah. So he's going to go. He's going to confess. Look, we've got crazy ashtray action here. He walks to this door. All I'm looking at are one, two, three. Every table has got one. We go over to the bar. Oh, my God. Do we have any ashtrays at the bar? Ooh, one, two in front of everybody. I think there's a different shot where there is one that appears right here as well. Either that or it is further over here. But there are three on this bar at one point. Continuity. Take a look at it. And he confesses. Uh, Mr. Cadwallander Wall- is like, well, of course, then this means you're fired. Uh, I can't have you be my fishing expert, even though you just won the fishing tournament and wrote I'm the book. I'm just saying, if you've spent your time at a job and you've collected knowledge about a uh, subject matter. Mm-hmm. So it's um, basically getting a PhD. Yeah, I mean, maybe university. you might not have physically done it, but you know enough about it to write a book about it. Yeah. Um, good for you, buddy. Right, right. right. Why, is, why the yeah. guilt, friend? Mm, I gives think, a shit. I don't know. This is my current stance on the topic. Also, hey guys, no fucking internet. Like nobody's gonna yeah, find out about this other exactly. than like exactly. This is all Wakapuji. Pre- yeah, I'm just saying. Plenty of Wakapujis out there um, for you to fish at. Raj. So he's just earned his PhD through Abercrombie and Fitch in fishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a practical it's like degree. Master it's salesman. Like you learn your craft through. Yeah. You know, live experience. Yeah, but I think the thing is they they sold him as the expert um, in this fishing competition. He's won it and... I mean, he won it. He caught the fish. It's not like someone else caught the fish I think, to be honest, the fish kind of threw themselves at him. I just like the woman. Is this when he saves the cat and he's like, I've got to be honest? Possibly. (sighs) I guess so. Yeah, I mean, it's his... The cat being his morals and values. I don't know. Well, yes, I don't know. but I don't they, know. they 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 have to be upheld now. 
Yeah, well, right. yes, and so he will walk away with his head held high as he as his career is cratered by Mr. Cadwallander for no particular reason other than reputational issues. Uh, he then goes to meet Roger goes to meet with because he wants to sweep Abigail off her feet. Kind of. He's not. He's never really that Is into this it. Movie he's, not over. Yet? It's no, we're so we're, like it went on really close. so much. We're close though. I promise. I promise. Just stick in there. So then he goes to Chief John Screaming Eagle, of course, oh. who agrees to, he's like, yeah, I know where she is. She's out camping. Well, Indian, right? I mean, obviously, right, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I know where she's at. I took her out there. I'll take you out there. So he canoes him out to this campsite where Abby has set up uh, what is just the most adorable, coziest little campsite for Isn't herself. It? And she is uh, knows what she's doing. In more ways than one, of course, she has built this fire by herself, set up her own little bed and lantern here, mm. but is also wearing these red knee-high socks. And mm. those are good looking. I'm just saying. Just saying. She knows what she's doing, all right? She can handle herself out there, you guys. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, Roger gets dropped off out there. She's like, I don't want to talk to you, motherfucker. You are not into me. I'm not into you. This We're done with this. But he's now left out there with no boat. He can't go anywhere. So he's like, well, I'm camping with you. Sorry. So he, it starts to rain. She crawls into her bed to hide away from him. Just like, get away from me. He can't read any signals. He's oblivious. He is probably ding, ding, ding on the spectrum. Oh, so he's getting wet. And he's getting wet yet again. You know how he hates Worst that. job, uh, worst acting job of all time. You're just going to be submerged in water, most of it. Good luck, Rock. Uh, but he climbs into bed with her because... <sighs> It's, cool. it's still pretty close to the 50s and you mm. could just do that, you know, so Doesn't not mean un- anything. Yeah, not yeah. unlike when he breaks into Doris Day's apartment in Pillow Talk and kidnaps her. He's just going to climb right in to camp bed with her there and that she lives with it because what else is she going to do? They end up falling asleep. Uh, we then cut back to the bar where all the old codgers are like you know what maybe we were too hard on mm. willoughby and why did we get him fired that was dumb mm. he's only tried to help us and also i think didn't they turn it to their business advantage it's like well if he is a mm. novice fisherman mm. and he can win this competition right think about the sales that right. book is going to go through the roof yeah yeah think of all the people who think they're going to be the next roger willoughby next year mm. going up for the big the big catch and so they're like, yeah, you know what? Hey, Cadwallander, you need to hire him back. I mean, this is, he's the guy with the info. It's worked so far. And why would we stop this? And Cadwallander's like, you're right. My uh, actions were based entirely on poorly written impulses by the screenwriters. So yes, I shall go find him in the middle of the night, in the middle of the rain, and tell him he has his job back. He does this, but as he does, he we see that this flo- this uh, inflatable camping bed has actually been swept out into the lake by the heavy rainwater. So they are floating out in the middle of that. Cadwallander sees them in the canoe. Uh, he gets his job back. Abigail lets him know that she was lying about the kiss being bad. And then they kiss again. We cut back to the footage of the old trains running into each other. And then we cut to... Another movie entirely that's also kind of 19, 20s, 30-ish silent movie of them saying the end or something like that, like a couple kissing. And it, I don't get it either. It doesn't make any sense. It was some kind of maybe industry in joke, joke, funny thing, comedy. <laughs> that's very good. So thus ends man's favorite sport. Thank goodness. It is. Good. So so dumb. <laughs> none of this made sense. None of this added up. This was just shit flung at a wall. This is it? not a very well put together film, you no. guys. Um, <laughs> Catherine Sherlock. Yes. Man's favorite sport. Yes. Simple question for you. Yes. We keep watching this. Hell no. Okay. <laughs> I do have a yes written down here. Do you? But that's because I got overexcited about my art. Uh, artifact, but we'll cut. Oh, that. okay, okay. So yeah. you are thumbs up on whatever you're bringing back, but, but no on this hell movie. Hell on the film. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Shushman Nike. I mean, did. I didn't even watch it the first time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No. I can't with good are you telling say. us you're not going to go, you're not going to revisit and <laughs> finish that off? This one. 
You don't want to miss that that big finale when they they float out to the campsite and and he's so rude to her, but she still wants to kiss him. I mean, it's classic, timeless entertainment. It's horrible. Carolyn now rose. It's a no. It's, <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'll let you ask. It's the a no for me. Ahead. I don't even need to ask it of, of whether or not we keep watching this. It's it's a solid no from you. I'm there for all the, you know, time period camping gear. I am definitely a no for this plot. And these yeah, characters, yeah. Though. And I'm, I'm the same. I'm here for the vibe. I'm here for the hang. But as a movie, right. this doesn't work at all. This is it's insulting to the audience. And again, this is a thing that I, I think we're going to notice as we get into these deep mid sixties films here, I think they kind of take their foot off the gas as far as like, is any of this relevant? Is this do anything for you? I think they're just like, Hey, we've got people stuff to put them stuff. together. Yeah, yeah. Let's, we got a movie, uh, have it to me in five months or whatever. I mean, it's so dull and sleepy and boring that there's no justifying it. So if you want grandpa's garage vibes, I will direct you back to my yes from last week for long, long trailer, which has, much similar things uh, done in a better, more efficient way somehow. And uh, yeah, so it's a no for me, dog, on this one. Yeah. And I like the. Wow, I like this movie. Is that our first, like, we're in agreement? Uh, it's our first agreed I no, I think, yes. maybe. Unanimous. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tough to say. Okay, so this concludes Man's Favorite Sport and also week two of Summer Vacation. You guys look so relaxed. <laughs> I'm so relaxed. What Listen, let's uh, let's take a look at where we're going on vacation next week, shall we? We've got a couple more weeks left. So next week, you're going to want to tune in because we are going on vacation to experience 1963's Beach Party. That's right. Oh, boy. Beach Party. The first of six, maybe seven beach movies that we will be watching over the course of this show. Anthropology professor Robert Orwell Sutwell and his secretary, Mary Ann, are studying the sex habits of teenagers. The surfing teens, led by Frankie and Dee Dee, don't have much sex, but they sing, battle the motorcycle rats and mice, led by Eric Von Zipper, and dance to Dick Dale and the Deltones. Wow. Uh, Starring Robert Cummings, Dorothy Malone, (laughs) and Frankie Avalon. Directed by William Asher, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so shouldn't have let that hey, person. Tune in. Can I already say that I'm not going to watch this movie? <laughs> what? No, guys, you have to watch it. I'm going to watch it. You have to watch it. Even if it's do my homework. The, the stupid part is right. what makes it right. sane. You know, like, we know it's bad. The more you hate it, the better it I'm is. Gonna, look, I'm going to do something I, I rarely, if ever, do and give you a spoiler for next week's Beach Party, 1963. Uh, it sucks. So oh, okay. just so you know, this isn't great cinema you're going to be watching. It's garbage. But it's going to take you to the beach, and that's what we need on vacation, all right? Summer vacay, we've, we've earned it, you guys. So until then, Catherine Sherlock, as ever, Best in the biz. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Shrishman Ike, as ever, best in the biz. Don't tell Catherine I said that. Girls. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Carolyn Narrows, best in the biz. Don't tell the others I told you that. Uh, we'll edit this out in I post. I was just your sister, and that's why I was You here. are not just my sister. You're my sister's sister, you know? Like, you're your sister with a capital S. Your actual yeah. <laughs> sister, not your cousins who are like right. your sisters. Flesh and blood. You suck at volleyball, but you still... But FYI, they're both ranked ahead of me, Kelly. And uh, hey, look, I mean, th- those, those <laughs> rankings are all unofficial, and they're very fluid, too. They will change. It's but true. But for right it's now, fine. hey, you're number it. one for right now. Kelly and Leah, take a seat. I'm confident in myself. You didn't just do a three-hour podcast on a shitty Rock Hudson movie. <laughs> Kelly and Leah, sit down. Carolyn, you're number one they tonight. <laughs> I feel like gladly do that if you ask uh, them. Hey, come on. <laughs> We're all friends here. We're all friends here. Hey, Kelly and Leah, you want to be on our show? Uh, Let us know. Party line. (laughs) OldMovieTimeMachine.com. And so concludes yet another episode of Old Movie Time Machine. Boy, that was a doozy, was it not? We would like to hear from you as well. So please write us at partyline at oldmovietimemachine.com and let us know what you thought about man's favorite sport. Is this truly man's favorite sport? By which I mean girls, right? You listen to the show. You know what I'm talking about. 
Uh, let us know if you think that Paul Apprentice is too good for Rock Hudson's character, the old fusty Roger Willoughby. Uh, we would love to hear from you, please. Uh, or just, you know, write to say hello. You know, Shrishma would love to hear from you. I'm sure of it. And as for next week, we're going to be watching Beach Party. This is a very silly movie that we would love for you to have watched before we do the show. So please go check out Beach Party from 1963. It is currently streaming on Hoopla and Pluto TV, so you can check that out. But if you want to rent it or buy it, and frankly, why wouldn't you want to do either of those things? Do both. You can get this movie at Amazon, Google Play, YouTube, and the Microsoft Store. And that's it for the week. We will see you next Wednesday when we will be talking about 1963's Beach Party on Old Movie Time Machine. 